So when I was first starting, I, I you know, I had, you know, I had the, right, the toe was in. It was the whole foot in, right? But it, but I was like, I didn't have a complete understanding that I could make this thing work. So it's very easy to hire someone part time and say, hey, listen. Uh, and I love the part time stay uh, part part time because I, they can drop the kids off at eight thirty, come come work with me at nine, go leave at two thirty, and go back and pick the kids up at three. Work very very well. Why? A couple reasons. One, it's difficult for that person, a high level skilled person though, who else wants to be a parent. And and, and take this from which will. This is just how I did it. But as someone who wants to still be a parent and have a have a participant nature in their child's life, but the same standpoint contribute and make income and be in production and, and, and bring in money into their own household. And for me, that's, that's, that said a lot about that person. It said a lot about that person who said, this is my free time throughout the week, but I want to work to make more money. And I was like, I like that. And for me, it worked out very, very well because, so we'll just use Jade because she's the best example I have. She would come and she'd drop her kids off, come work, work as fast and hard as she could. She was super efficient. And then she'd take off and go get the kids. And eventually it came to the point where she was like, hey, I actually would like to work full time. And we, we made arrangements and now it's, it's a highly functioning office. But when you're having a conversation early on with your staff, it's saying, you're talking about, you know, one, I'm not looking for more agents. I've got plenty of marketing channels in which to acquire agents. How to, as we talked about yesterday, talk to, to collect interest, to only talk and create interest from talking to interested people, right? That's a great way by posting ads and uh, ZipRecruiter, Indeed, I mean, you're using these platforms for multiple purposes, but like ZipRecruiter, Craigslist, Indeed, Facebook, job posts again, um, all of our different hiring campaigns, how we fire agents, hire agents. But in the same sense, when I'm trying to hire a staff member, I'm saying, I'm not looking for another agent. I'm looking for someone to support me in my business. This is what I want to do. I'm working it with a group of people who have agencies that are doing 100,000 a month, 500,000 a month. Uh, a million a month, two million a month. The company that, I, that I'm in does $300 million a month. I'm sorry, a year. And what I would like to do is I want to build an agency like they are doing. Will you support me? Are you looking for a career or are you looking for a short-term, part-time job? Because I'm trying to build something to the moon and I can't do it with someone who's just looking for something short-term, right? I talk to a lot of you know my, my top managers who have staff and I tell them they should fire a lot of them because they're not all in on their business. I believe that Caitlin and China and Jade are all in on our business. Guess why? Well, now they're integrity employees and they have stock and integrity. Claw that up. <laughs> so, in that conversation, you're trying to find someone that, that I mean, and, and it has a lot of self reflection. Like, I was lying to Jade. I was like, I'm going to build a huge. But, like, I was not, I have no idea how to build a huge when I told her, I was telling her from day one that I was going to build something big. But I believed that I could if I tried. And so in that mindset, it's when you're communicating with your early on staff member and saying, one, I'm not looking for more agents, two, I'm trying to build something, I'm looking for someone to support me. And then being that person each and every day, that they see that you're someone worth following, that you're, see, you're someone worth working with, and that you create a good, positive environment, a good, uplifting, coaching um, community that can help them also become better people. They just don't want to be psycho, cold-blooded entrepreneurs like we do. They just want to support cold-blooded psychopathic entrepreneurs, right? So, so understanding that. So how does so how do we progress, right? So I started part time. If you if you've got the chops, hire someone full time. But just for me, early on, it started part time, and that was a very easy way for me to get someone to fill that time void because they could still make money while still participating in the general natures in which they needed to do each and every day they become accustomed to. But the line that I learned from Sean was when you're starting someone and you've gotten to the table and you're talking about what you want to do and what, what you need them to do, and we'll talk about tasks here in a second, you see them on the screen. Um, it's saying, listen, the way this is gonna go is we're either, we're gonna do like a 30 day test, and at the end of 30 days, we're either gonna part ways, or I'm gonna give you a raise. And what does it do for them? It gives them complete clarity, complete clarity. So, so we're either, I'm either gonna make more money in 30 days, because their only job is to help your business become more profitable. So if it makes it they become more profitable, it's very, very easy to give them a raise, or it doesn't work out, and you let them go. And you say, I wish you well, it's just not working out here in our environment. So knowing that, what does that also give you permission to do? To work really hard, to ask good questions, to take good notes, to watch videos, to go above and beyond, right? If this was a new career that I was starting, I'd be studying the business on the weekends. I'd be studying the business at lunch break. I'd be, I'd be reading blogs on the company. I, you know, if I went to go work at Honda, 
selling cars, I learn everything about the old CRX and I learn everything about the Civic and the, I don't, even, I, mean, I don't know a lot of condom on this, there's a truck, right? I don't know a lot about Hondas, but I would learn if I was gonna work at Honda. I would study because if I'm gonna walk on the lot, I wanna know everything about Hondas. And if some dude's a Honda enthusiast and it's me, or it's, I'm getting a sale because I know about the old Ridge line, then <laughs> what's gonna happen? He's probably gonna buy the, the car from me. So that, in my mind, is how I would, I would, I would be looking for a person like that. So, 30 days, either part ways or give you a raise. It gives you very much permission, but they're gonna go work extra hard in that early on 30 day first preliminary period because they want a promotion. Who doesn't want any more money, right? You're already giving a pathway to make more money. So from their tasks early on for your first staff member that's gonna support you in your growing business, it's easy stuff. It's one, learning back offices, and it's handling the tasks that are distractions for your money-making activities, which are what? Selling and teaching, selling and teaching, right? That's, if that's all we've gotta do, then everything else should be delegated to someone else who's better at it than you. Because I'm not that great at all the things that I don't do. Because I, I didn't choose to get good at them. I, got really, I chose to get really good at selling insurance and getting the check from Dolores, and I chose to get really good at talking to that guy at that other IMO, and bringing him over to my IMO, because it's better. I got really good at those two things. And if you focus on getting good at those two things, they'll pay you far more than working on your penmanship on doing thank you cards, or learning how to sit on old train. I do all the stuff you gotta do work. Figure out how hierarchies work. I don't even know, like, I, I love, thank you Jade for all your knowledge in hierarchies. So, the things that I would have early on doing are thank you cards to keep business on the books, calling pending if you get a cancellation notice or you get some sort of notification from the carrier, right? Who, who often gets email from America or Beach of Omaha and you go, oh, I'm not even gonna deal with it, right? That's because you're in the field, you've got eight appointments already or it's middle of dial day and you don't wanna sit on hold for 15 minutes, right? But you send that email off to your staff member, they figure out what's going on, it's Betty's you know, card expired, it needs to get updated and now she saved you 600 bucks because but we get so busy and focused on the, on, the, on the more, 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 that we forget that the business maintenance can be very affordable to help us keep us make more money, keep more money on the books. So, an understanding that, client calls you, right? George is kind of a tough butt, but he, uh, he's here, he's calling me the next day. You know, all George wants to do is put his son back on the, um, on the beneficiary form, because he told you he wasn't giving anything and everything's going to Susie, but now he wants to put little, little Georgie on and that's all he wants to do is add some of the beneficiary for him. But we don't answer that call because we think he's going to cancel. So what do you do? Hey, Jade, call George. Jade calls George, George Jade figures it all out, fixes it for, fixes it. So, but that's some simple things we can do early on in our business that will make us more money, keep us more profitable to again put us in a position where we, you know, staff pays for itself. And the last thing I would say would be new agent follow-up. For any of you that are building a team, I, anyone you send into contracting or put in a class, I would be having that step member calling and saying, um, Clay's been getting the, a lot of love this call, but it was like, you know, hey Jay, can you play a call and just let him know that we got him in class? And she'd call Clay and she'd be like, hey Clay, perfect, you're coming to the team. I heard Grady spoke really high of you. Oh, I can't, you know, what we're gonna do is get you put in class. You got your test booked already? Perfect, okay, excellent, we're gonna get you that voucher sent over. Hey Clay, I understand we just got the contracting link sent over. Uh, perfect, yeah, you're able to get the contract knocked out today? Oh no, not today, oh no, Grady said you're, you're able to get it knocked out today. Any reason? Uh, you got the kids? Yeah, what, you know, kids go to bed sometime, right? Eight o'clock, okay, can you do it at 8.30? Okay, perfect. All right, so I'll let Grady know you're getting the contract out because he's in the field right now, he's got eight appointments today, protecting families. Yeah, he actually paid $27,000 last month. So you're gonna get it in the day? Perfect, man, welcome to the team. I'll call you tomorrow, make sure you got it all done, let me know if you have any questions. Right, so your staff members come behind you edifying your business. That's what good staff does, but too many of us won't, we won't post an ad, find someone good, put someone in employment to let them like build a career with you because we're too scared to, to make ourselves vulnerable or add that extra level of responsibility. So as a finish up, great staff would be an admin to start, move yourself into recruiter, contracting, marketing, and then don't create any silos within your business, which means teach everybody everything so that they can all support something. Someone gets sick, someone can pick up the ball. Mark, you know, something happens, you gotta let someone go. Everybody knows everything. And that puts you in a strong position to win. Appreciate you guys. Have a great day.